Hello, I'm John Knight Mangum Jr., a great-great-grandson of Newell Knight, the middle son of Joseph Knight Sr. and his wife Polly. I'm going to tell you about an episode near the end of Newell's life um, that led him to a, a place not many people are aware of. As Newell and his family left Nauvoo in late April of 1846, they were among a large group of saints. Um, by the time they, a month later, caught up to Brigham Young at Mount Pisgah, um, Brigham had some interesting information for Newell. Brigham told Newell he wanted him to be among a group of people that was to head west to or past the Rocky Mountains that summer of 1846. He wanted Newell to build a mill that would be operational by the time the main body of saints would arrive the following year. Even though Newell was rather ill-prepared to uh, embark on such a journey, he readily agreed. However, um, given the rigors of the trail, it took until uh, two months later, uh, until July 23rd of 1846, before Newell and other members of those who had been asked to, to go west that year were, were ready. When Brigham Young sent them off from the Elkhorn, Ri Elkhorn River crossing, which was um, a good distance west from uh, Winter Quarters, maybe 50, 80 miles, I'm not sure, um, Brigham asked Newell at that point to be the leader, the lead captain of this vanguard company uh, called the Brigham Young Company. It was one of three vanguard companies that were to head west that summer, late summer of 1846. Um, and so as they left uh, in late July, they traveled for about a week, covered maybe 90 miles or so, and were approaching the uh, site of uh, uh, an evangelical church mission for Pawnee Indians that unfortunately had been raided by Sioux Indians earlier that summer in mid-June. And uh, that was a, a site of an unfortunate massacre. Well, there was another vanguard company led by George Miller who was a little ahead of Newell's company and uh, Brother Miller had already arrived at the Pawnee site and was helping remove a lot of what remained back further east. And so he encountered Newell just maybe six miles or so east of that uh, Pawnee mission site. And at that point, Brother Miller told Newell that Brother Miller was supposed to be the leader of all of the groups heading west. Well, to settle that, Newell and one of uh, Miller's men rode horseback uh, back east to find Brigham Young. Took him uh, two long days of riding. And at that point, Brigham Young, based on new information, had uh, a different set of instructions. He told uh, these people that the Vanguard companies were not to go all the way west that summer, that it was too late. And he did uh, tell them at that point that Brother Miller would be the leader of a high council of uh, 12 men, of which Newell would be one. And this was Newell's fourth term of service on a high council. So by the time Newell gets back to his company, um, it's now uh, approximately August 9th or thereabouts and after a couple of days of reorganizing and uh, meeting with four Ponca Indian chiefs they decide instead to head north for the winter about 90 miles to uh, a place near where the Niobrara River meets the Missouri River. It's just south a few miles from the present border between Nebraska and South Dakota. And that's where the Ponca Indians had a, a winter camp and they were very friendly and invited all these saints to join them there that winter, perhaps thinking that they might help provide some protection from other Indians who were not so friendly, including particularly the Sioux at that time. 
Anyway, that's what uh, Newell's company did. Um, they arrived uh, late August and then in September built a fort um, to house um, uh, all of the many families. Uh, I think there were over a hundred families that, that needed lodging for the winter and uh, they, they settled in for uh, a good winter. One interesting story on the evening of December 26, uh, 1846, uh, looking to the west or southwest, uh, the men at the fort saw flames of a fire approaching. And about 8 p.m. they mustered everyone out to fight this fire before it burned down the fort. They succeeded, but not before the fire did burn some haystacks and uh, a wagon or two near the haystacks. But with a lot of effort, they, they succeeded in preserving the key things they needed to survive the rest of the winter. Um, it wasn't long after that um, when the weather turned much colder and on Sunday, January 3rd of, eight, of 1847, Newell addressed everyone uh, and told them they, they all needed to be united, they needed to cleanse uh, body and soul and their habitations to uh, be able to have the guidance of the Lord uh, for the coming season. Unfortunately, uh, Newell took sick the next day, January 4th, only lasted one week, and died there at the Ponca Indian Camp on January 11, 1847, at the relatively young age of 46 years old. That's my story. <laughs>